folks, three and a half minutes or less. So this wonderful couple comes to me. They were age 60. This was last year. They were age 60. They said, I want to retire. We want to retire at age 62. We have $800,000 or so in our portfolio. Here's how our portfolio is allocated. Charlie, what is our number? Remember the ING days? What's your number? If you have 800 grand, what does that mean you can take in retirement income? So I punched that into my software and I said, based off of my Monte Carlo simulation here, your number is $54,000 that can increase with inflation as inflation increases. Of course, I embedded in an inflation assumption, but with a couple of magical tweaks here, optimizing social security, adding an annuity, I was able to get their projected, projected disclaimer income up to above $70,000, which was their goal, $70,000 after tax in today's dollars. But then after, you know, this is step three or four or whatever, but I wanted to talk about the final step. But we're being overly generous to your situation because we don't have a big hump embedded in here later on that is statistically likely to happen. And that is that, well, both of you will probably end up needing long-term care. It's just statistics. But let's say that one of you needs long-term care. Let's embed in here a little bump, a hump, a lump, whatever you want to call it, and that's a long-term care expenditure. So the red is the expenditures in every year of retirement. How you finance that red is what the little bars represent. You have annuities, you have qualified accounts, you have social security. Let's embed in today's dollars an $8,000 a month expenditure for long-term care. Boom! For the three years that I embedded in here, that's a big hump, right? Wouldn't it be nice if that hump was taken care of, if it was financed? Now, of course, that because we're now budgeting for that long-term care event, that, as we should, that brought down their income projection to $60,000. But the million-dollar question is, is okay from the $60,000, if we add the expense of long-term care insurance premium along with the benefit of that long-term care insurance paying for our long-term care, is it a net positive to our 60,644 or is it a net negative? Because if this number drops, then Charlie, I am not buying long-term care insurance. I'm keeping it invested in my portfolio because, well, the numbers don't lie, at least based off projections. So let's do that. I ran the illustrations, Mutual of Omaha, Jack's Premium, for that long-term care insurance policy. Won't give you all the details here. Wanna keep this short, almost $4,000 a year. Boom, let's turn that on. Jill's, almost $7,000 per year. The ladies are more expensive than us guys when it comes to, well, when it comes to everything pretty much, except for life insurance. When it comes to long-term care, ladies are more expensive than the guys. So far, we've just included the premium for long-term care, so it's no coincidence, it dropped from $60,000. Now let's go down and let's put in that wonderful benefit. Long-term care is kicking in to pay for that hump later on down the road. That's that beautiful purple bar there. Did we increase or decrease from $60,000? Folks, we increased, which means long-term care insurance in this example was a net positive.